Hey, George, welcome to the show. As a way of getting started, tell us about yourself. Thank you. Yeah, George is my name. I'm the founder and CEO of Membrane, uh, which is a sales enablement CRM for B2B specifically. So we're trying to guide people, salespeople and managers in how to become more effective when it comes to complex B2B sales. And you're also an author or soon to be published author. Soon to be, yeah. The first book comes out on Tuesday. So that's, uh, that's, that's exciting, of course. Uh, although the times are, are not the best. Maybe they are. People have a lot of time at their hands, uh, or, or some at least. And what was the motivation behind the book? Well, I've been blogging for a few years now uh, and doing a lot of thinking about sales. And uh, the reason I founded Membrane was, was of course, not of course, but it was because of my previous experiences and my, my lack of successfully building a sales team and all the mistakes I made. So it's just getting the thoughts out there in a book format because I've been writing about these things for a few years now, but uh, putting it into a book format was exciting and it's fun to get it out. And how about the title? I mean, who's killing yeah, these stop deals? killing deals. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's somewhat inspired by the checklist manifesto, which I know has been going around uh, in the sales space now for a while. But I realized in my previous company that um, we were doing a lot of simple mistakes that kill deals. So I was blaming the poor performance on the people, uh, <laughs> uh, the, recru the recruiters who found me the wrong salespeople and the salespeople, and uh, I just had to stop blaming people uh, and, and I figured out, of course, I was, I was the big problem or the root of the problems. Um, what happened to my screen? Yeah, oh right. no, <laughs> blue screen of death. Is uh, that your computer? Can we cut? Can I fix it? Uh, yeah, so you, you saw the mistakes were caused by you? Yeah, so exactly, doing some uh, some deep soul searching. Uh, that's what I came up with. And uh, but then when I started to look at the delta, so what were the the good salespeople doing, and uh, what were the salespeople doing that that were not very successful? And I found out that there were pretty simple mistakes. Right, we were selling IT automation at the time, and you had to get you have to sort of get the tech people on board. Uh, but some of the sales guys didn't didn't feel comfortable talking to the tech people, so they skipped it, right? And, uh, and the tech guys, if you, don't, if you didn't involve them in, in this, uh, they, would, uh, they would just kill the deals for you, right? They would say, well, we don't need these tools because they were, gonna, they were getting afraid that they were, gonna get, they were gonna lose their jobs, basically. Yeah. So they told their bosses like, no, 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 this is completely uh, wasteful, don't buy this tool, it's, it's moronic. Uh, so, so if they just, so we taught them to, to uh, include uh, everyone that needed to be involved in the sales cycle, yeah. which is, it seems like an obvious thing, right? But it wasn't. So that was one example of, of, of a simple mistake that killed deals. Well, I, I think there's a lot of those things. And that's what I liked about the checklist manifesto is that, you know, and you talk a lot about neuroscience in the book is that we, we feel comfortable that we are smart people and we know all these things. Yeah. And then I try and drill it down to something that we've all done. How many times have you taken a business trip and forgot your charger, your belt, your socks? Yeah. Something that's simple, right? Yeah, I agree. Or just go grocery shopping. You forget something. And you forget the milk or you forget something to buy, buy the wrong brand of something and your wife sends you back, right? Right. <laughs> And all of those things can be repaired with a very simple thing. Yeah. And, and I think we forget that we're just mammals. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah that's, that's true. And, and, and also, the, it goes deeper than that. Because even if we know how to do... So if we know how to do things, that's the easy fix, right? But sometimes we don't know how to do things. Yeah. Right? You can say, do a, a really professional expor exploration call. But what does that really mean? Yeah. Uh, so if you're onboarding new people and you tell them to do that, they will probably do it as they did it previously in the uh, in another company, and that might be the totally wrong thing to do. So I think also we need to a checklist for me in my head is is deeper. It's not just a checklist. It's actually uh, a tool that guides and educates and trains you yeah. uh, when you're using it. Right, because even the, you know the best chefs have a recipe book. 
You know, yeah, that's that's a funny metaphor. I, I, I'm I'm a bit skeptical to that though, because the recipe is so simplistic, right? If you follow the right. recipe, hopefully, if we're talking baking at least, you'll get a good cake. In selling, mm, I, it's 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 a bit more complex right. than that, of course. But, yeah, because uh, yeah. It, it, selling I, I describe as a performance profession, not a knowledge solely profession. You, mm. If you gave a quiz to salespeople, them getting a hundred on it doesn't mean they're a good salesperson. That's true. Listen, yeah. true, <laughs> right? Ask questions, true. Yeah, yeah. Ask open-ended questions, true, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Now that's true. It's true. It's, it's, there's a lot of depth to to selling, for sure. Yeah, and that's what makes it fun, right? And that's what makes the profession so exciting, right? I I think. And I think there's so much going on in it, like uh, like in comedy, right? There's for every great comedian, there's probably a thousand comedy writers. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. What does that tell you? That tells you that writing a joke isn't hard. Uh -huh. Telling a joke is hard. Yeah, and it takes training. I actually have a brother who's a stand-up comedian. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, so I've seen him work. And uh, the amount of time he spends on writing one joke that takes him 30 seconds to deliver is substantial, right? So yes. there's a lot of time to write, takes a lot of time to write, and then it's the timing, to to timing and energy and feeling the room and all that stuff that comes around that uh, that is so difficult. Right, his facial expression, when he does it, how he builds it up. And, and when he learns how to do it the first time, the second time, the third time, so when he, once he delivers it the hundredth time, yeah. it feels so natural. It feels like he just came up with the idea, the joke just came. But That's it. I'm a huge comedy oh, fan. And if you listen to the comedians, they, do, they produce one hour of comedy a year. <laughs> yeah, that's how hard it is, yeah. And these aren't amateur comedians. These are oh, exactly. These are the top. <laughs> yeah, the Chris yeah, Rocks. That's, and that the, is very fascinating information that that you might not really think about when you when you look at comedy. You know, when you what is comedy but professional communication? Yeah, for right? sure. To, to elicit yeah. laughter. Yep. And what is sales? It's professional communication with the production of a decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and consensus. All of that. Right, yeah. because you know, in the complex sale, you got to convince many different people, yeah. not just that one person. Yeah, that's when it gets really exciting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. you touched on the the key problem is if you stick with that one person, who yeah. is con convinced and your advocate, you're relying on them to sell within that company. Right. Yeah, uh, that is uh, that's a Russian roulette right there. So, what else is killing deals? Yeah, I write about assumptions in the book. So we've we've touched on a few that we we sort of believe that salespeople uh, are somehow born. It's a born trait. I think a lot of people assume that or have that belief that uh, if yeah, if either you're a salesperson or you're not. Uh, I don't believe that to be true. And 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 if you hold that as a, as a true assumption, which I did actually uh, with, when I made all my mistakes back in the days, I thought if you were born a salespeople, salesperson, and you had a, a successful track record, then you would be selling successfully from, from my company. So the, that kind of assumption is dangerous. The second one is, is the discipline one, which we, we sort of touched upon with the, with the checklists yeah. thing. For some reason, we believe if we give a salesperson a target, a quota that we set without their involvement even, uh, they will somehow go like a heat seeking missile, uh, go achieve that target without us even giving them the right resources, training, guidance, coaching, et cetera. So I think this so in, in belief that salespeople are also disciplined by nature is killing a lot of deals. Right, because I, I, I see a lot of reactivity versus proactivity. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And 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 what is selling? Uh, if and sales enablement has been a big topic lately, uh, and there's always a, an interesting discussion to be had. What what that even means, uh, right? Means yeah. and what what it contains. And um, so yeah, a lot of reactivity. And and in these times when we have a crisis, I think it's it's a good time in a sense to to sort of slow down. To, to then speed up once uh, we get back to normality. Because a lot of people are so 
they're just looking to make the number. So it's very quarterly driven, make the number, make the number, do more, do more faster. But we have to really come down, slow down, have a strategy, understand the clients, design a process that's then uh, aligned with the buyer and the strategy, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a good time in a sense, I think, to, to get one's ducks, ducks in a row uh, when we're in, the, in a crisis like this. And how would you design like the ideal salesperson? What do you look for? What skills would you develop? Yes, yeah, so it all comes down to your buyer, right? What, 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 how complex is the decision for them? Uh, so I think that's where it all has to start. And, and we're selling a, a CRM slash sales enablement technology. So it's a fairly complex deal. Uh, number of people involved, a lot of uh, sunk cost. So a salesperson in our environment uh, needs to be pretty consultative, a bit, yeah, to, to use this uh, term, a challenge, challenger <laughs> in the way <laughs> that you have to sort of maybe provide them with some new insights that what you, the, the tools you bought 10 years ago might not be the right tools today. Right. So, and you have to be comfortable with having that type of, of dialogue. So, but collaboration, it's, it's all about facilitating or helping someone come to a decision as you, you hinted to earlier. Uh, so you have to be a very good communicator. Uh, I think you need a lot of empathy, especially in these times, to understand the customers. What, do, what are they trying to accomplish? What could they accomplish? Because sometimes they don't even know, right? How well they could be doing <laughs> with your help. Yeah, because I mean, I obviously see a lot of people not understanding how companies buy. Yeah. And, and companies don't even know that themselves. Of course not. <laughs> right? So Do you know how yeah. to buy a house. I don't know how to buy a house. <laughs> right? You don't buy it often, right? It, it, right. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. When I did buy a house, I didn't know the steps. I didn't know the process. We did it without a realtor. And that yeah. the guy who sold me the house was a builder. Uh, so he kind of knew, yeah. but it, it is this process. Mm -hmm. and, but everybody thinks they know until they don't. Yeah, and, and it's also the house example is, is interesting because what if you have kids? Uh, the yes. seller might not even consider them to be stakeholders, but they surely are. They, yes. will, they, they will have inputs depending on their age, of course. But uh, yeah, so, so really understanding everyone who will be involved involved, I think is still the number one mistakes uh, salespeople uh, do, uh, not understanding how the buyer will make a decision and not helping the guy, uh, the, the buyer understand it themselves. Because yeah. unless it's something they buy often, they're not, they don't know. Right, yeah, I mean, taking an order is pretty simple. Right? Very simple. Creating yeah. an order is very complicated. That's the fun part, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and people yeah. think it's the uh, the norm that it gets bought. It's the norm that it gets stalled. Exactly. Yeah, we all want to. We all want to try to use a workaround first, right? If I have something, if I have a house, maybe my the easiest option would be to extend the house instead of buying a bigger house. Yeah. But that's probably not even in the mindset of the the realtor or the tr the, the person trying to sell you a new house. Right. Unless they ask, why haven't you considered extending your house? Yeah. And you say, well, we did maybe that. I should. <laughs> <laughs> or now we hate our house. I mean, the, the, the answer can be different. Or we want to go get to, into another neighborhood. Right. So, but unless you ask, you won't know. And then you're going to be surprised when they say, well, you know, we, we decided not to buy a house. We're just going to extend the existing one. We love it. Yeah. And you're like, holy, I didn't see that one coming. Well, you should have. And when you see your client's process, is it overly simplified? Uh, <laughs> oh, I love the question. Uh, it's either or, I would say. It's too complicated or too simple? E yeah, a lot of people go overboard uh, and they just try to build the, the most perfect sales process ever. And they even have this idea that they want to have one process for everything. Uh, which is nuts, of course, but that goes back to the traditional sale CRMs who weren't really considering that there might be different ways of selling. So, uh, yeah, either too complex uh, or too simplified. I would say it depends on uh, what you're selling, of course, and how much they've thought about these things. I think yeah. to, going back to the assumptions, 
I, st I think that a lot of people still have this idea that if you hire the right people, they should know what to do. They should just log what they've done and we're gonna check if they've done enough. I mean, a lot of people are still in that bucket. That, that, that is, I think, killing sales. It is. That, that, yeah. That's my book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just I, mean, it is. I, yeah. I think what, what's happened in the last 10 years with the division of labor gone mad and assuming mm. you can hire people with zero sales experience and give them KPIs. Yeah. And, and automation tools to spam people to death. Which has ruined email for the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's annoying to say the least. Right. That, no empathy. A lot of people who have never talked on the phone in their life, right? Because they, they've texted their whole life. Uh, they're money motivated, which is good, but told that it's just simply a numbers game. Yeah. Here's a script. You know, go, it worked 20 years ago for me. It should work today. Yeah. You know, and then these, all these. No, I, I, I agree with you 100%. It's, it's frustrating and it's, it's killing the, again, uh, killing the reputation of sales. I, I, I think a lot of good things has, have, have, have happened over the last decade and so in, in sales. Uh, but this sort of brings us back to this cold, poor cold calling uh, era, <laughs> right? Uh, which is because look, new look, technology. When, when you want to buy something, you probably have a circle of friends you might ask, right? A house, a car, a vacation. Where'd you go? I don't know. Word of mouth is how we're wired. Strangers, we naturally do not trust, right? Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I, but I think the the reason why this is happening is there are so many Silicon Valley startups with too much money in the bank yes. and they have a, a new uh, cool product that the, the whole world is the oyster. So yep. they're just going to go do a land grab. So for them, it might work. I mean, it takes them to a certain revenue number, which is their primary target to get a higher valuation or the, to sell the company. To do it more. <laughs> and to do, and do it even more. Uh, but I think the, the, the danger in that is when they start promoting these ideas and telling everyone else to do the same because yeah. if you're a b2b selling companies and a company and you're selling to i don't know 1000 potential clients in the world you would never want to take that approach even though i i, I could argue you would, you would never want to take the approach at all but i think you have to really realize who are we selling to what is what's the buyer expecting if you're selling something complex and and on value I, I would be very, very careful about that type yeah. of tactic. You know, because I did mostly startups when I was a rep. And what we do have today is a lot of great data. Yeah. Because for most of my career, there was no data. Mm -hmm. you, know, you couldn't even guess email addresses because they were all had numbers and crazy letters in them. <laughs> yeah. On yeah. purpose for, to, yeah. to, to mask that. And you, you could get the main phone number, but then you'd have to walk the tree trying to find the right people. Today, that's all visible, but nobody wants to talk to us. So it's this paradox. Yeah. Yet yeah. Everyone still wants to connect with other people. Everybody mm -hmm. still wants help. You know? Yeah, no, it's an interesting world we're living in. And, and I, I might sound too negative now, especially as a tech vendor, but <laughs> it's like everything, right? If you, if you give a, a fool a tool, it's, he's still a, a fool. Dangerous. So uh, you, yeah. you, you can do a lot of good things with technology, but you can also do a lot of bad dangerous things, things yeah. bad things with technology. So it's how you use it is probably the, the main thing. And what do you hope people will get out of the book? Yeah, hopefully um, they will get some, some aha uh, moments like, oh yeah, oh, that's true. Uh, may, maybe people aren't born. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't assume that everyone is disciplined and maybe I shouldn't assume that they know what to do and should just love what they've done. And to, to get this sit down and just think, how are we selling? I mean, that's what I really want people to start thinking about. What is our way of selling? Because I truly believe that's what's going to differentiate you in the market, the way you sell. Uh, because product services, they all look the same right. to buyers online. So how you engage buyers, is, is really what's going to make a difference. So that's what I want people to start thinking about. And what do you think of the critical selling skills? Well, it's hard to give a simple 
response uh, it goes back to to the type of selling right and the, if it's complex or if it's more transactional it's complex but in the complex sale yeah i would say it's really having this understanding of of uh, the buyer's uh, world uh, so you need to be business savvy uh, you need to be able to understand how to get them to understand how they buy. Uh, you need to be able to speak the language of money. Uh, you need to be able to coordinate uh, a lot of different people and be a good communicator and get people to see a vision that they want to get to, uh, to yeah. work towards. And you can be a part of it. I mean, you can help them get there. So. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's a response to the question. Yeah, no, that's good because, you know, because there's a lot of people that are good talkers, not good listeners, not good question askers. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's of course, uh, a, a super important point. You, you have to listen to listen, not listen to know, to, to find to a spot to speak, <laughs> which is very common. Yeah. Or, or even worse, being voice activated where they just talk over. The other person. Yeah, and, and B, I mentioned slow down to speed up. I think that goes for the sales cycle and the salesperson as well. Don't, just because you hear a, a, a buying signal, a trigger, don't jump to presentation. Slow right. down, drill yeah. deeper, understand, ask questions. And because if, if you do things right, they're going to ask to buy. I mean, that's good selling to me. Right. It, it's you don't a natural even have, outcome. It's a natural outcome of the process if you do it right. Yeah. So, yeah. And also to, to lead them through that decision-making process. Yeah. It, you know, it's a, I kind of have a scale of going from unaware to aware of the problem, curious about the problem, build interest in the problem, and then to have urgency and action to mm -hmm. solve the problem. Yeah. And yeah, I it, talk, yeah, I agreed. And it's really hard to keep that gate moving because it, it tends to slow down yeah. uh, as the sales process goes on. Look, we're having so much fun. My, my screen yeah. does that. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> yeah. But um, so what's next for you? Yeah. So the big thing for me, of course, is the launch of the book on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be fun. We, uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm the head of a software company. So of course we are up to a lot of good stuff. Uh, we're working on a account growth module, which is sort of our next wow. big launch. I think a lot of people are spending too little time actually growing their existing client relationships. Uh, so that's uh, our next sort of focus area. Uh, we continue to grow through partners. So that's, that's how we work. So we, we uh, engage a lot of sales trainers to help elevate the sales profession together. So cool. That's what and, we're up to. And where can you think they get the book? So it's going to be on Amazon on, on Tuesday. So March 31st, uh, paperback or Kindle. Yeah. Excellent. And where can they follow you? Find me on LinkedIn, George Bronton. Uh, and actually the book has a pretty cool link uh, URL. It's stop.killing.deals. <laughs> so you can download the first chapter there and, and some other resources uh, that, that I've added there for the, for the book. 